Hello students, welcome to Legacy AIS Academy. In today's video, we are going to discuss about the recent successful test that the DRDO, that is Defense Research Development Organization of India has conducted in the context of the Scram Jet Test. And because of this success of the test, India has joined the elite club of nations who are in the race of developing hypersonic weapons. So what is hypersonic weapons? What is a scramjet engine? And how this will increase the capabilities of India in the defense sector? Let us try to understand and analyze in more detail. Now to give you the background of this particular topic, as per the recent report published by the Ministry of Defense and the Government of India, it has stated that the DRDO, the research wing of the defense ministry, it has demonstrated the scramjet combustor ground test for 120 seconds. And the significance of this test we can understand from the point that it is for the first time when such kind of test has successfully been completed in India. Thus, the MOG has called it a very crucial milestone in the development of next generation hypersonic missiles, hypersonic weapons. In briefly, if we try to understand hypersonic missiles are such class of advanced weaponry, advanced missile system that travel a speed greater than Mach 5. Now Mach 1 refers to the speed of sound. So Mach 5 refers to the speed which is 5 times higher than the sound. As you know, the speed of sound is 330 meters per second. So you can calculate Mach 5 will be 330 into 5 meters per second. And this is something that is very, very next generation. It is something that only few countries have been successfully able to develop. Now, let us try to understand the concept of ramjet versus scramjet engine. So, you talk about the general jet engines, they use ramjet engines. So ramjet engine is an air breathing engine, that means it takes air from the atmosphere, and when the air enters the upper, the initial or the front, front part of the engine, it uses the vehicle's forward motion to compress the inflowing air inflowing air and the compression of this inflowing air then further undergoes combustion without a rotating kind of compression as such. So this is called as the ramjet engine. In the ramjet engine also you have a combustion chamber where ignition takes place and also you require assisted takeoff like a rocket assist. So these two are the requirement of the ramjet engine. Now the ramjet engine has certain limitations. The first limitation is that its efficiency has started to decrease once the speed of the uh, jet or the speed of the aircraft start to increase. For example, what we have witnessed that ramjet works most efficiently at a supersonic speed that is around Mach 3. Again to revise, I told you Mach 3 refers to three times the speed of sound. But it reduces once the vehicle reaches the hypersonic speed that is above Mach 5. And it is at this speed where the scramjet engine plays a very important role because a scramjet engine can work very efficiently at Mach 5 and even beyond that. The reason is because there is a fundamental difference between the ramjet and scramjet and the major difference is that the air in the scramjet engine does not slow down in the combustion chamber as it does in the ramjet engine but it stays supersonic throughout the engine. And second, due to this region, it makes the design, development and operation of the scramjet far more challenging. And it is in this context you have to understand that how significant is the recent experiment or recent, uh, we can say, test, ground test that is being done by the DRDO. Now within DRDO, you have DRDL, that is the Development Des Defense Research and Development Lab. So it is this lab that has successfully ground tested the active cooled scramjet combustion for 120 seconds for the first time in India. And while taking part in this particular experiment and test, the laboratory also has included some innovative ideas. These are, for example, a flame stabilization technique, as we can see from this particular photograph. So if the flame is stabilized, obviously it will increase overall efficiency and overall, we can say, takeoff of the, uh, this, we can say the vehicle. Second, it also has incorporated an indigenous endothermic scramjet fuel and third, it will have a dual benefit of significant cooling improvement and ease of ignition. Endothermic scramjet fuel, we know that there are two types of reaction, exothermic that releases the heat and endothermic that takes up the heat. So due to the use of endothermic fuel, what is the advantage? Obviously, the heating can be controlled, rather it will provide a cooling effect and also the ignition can be done in a much more easier manner. The other novel steps or the novel we can say effort that has been put by various organizations that are working in consonance with the DRDO 
is the TBC that is thermal barrier coating. In thermal barrier coating, it is designed to withdraw with a stand extreme temperatures encountered during hypersonic flight. And because you know that if any vehicle or vessel is moving at a hypersonic speed, it will experience a large drag, a frictional drag you can see in the atmosphere. Due to large scale frictional drag, there is a risk of destruction, there is a risk of damage and the risk of the explosion. So a new advanced ceramic TBC with high thermal resistance, if it is used for the coating of the vessel, in that case, the uh, operation of this vessel can be much more smoother, much more efficient and even if you try to understand the significance of TBC, it has been proved that it can operate beyond the melting point of the steel. So these are certain steps or uh, ideas that have been incorporated in the present effort India is putting to a development of hypersonic technology. Now, if you look at the development of hypersonic technology in India, the DRDO has been working on it since the beginning of 2001 and it has been working on the engines and other technology that also is required for the hypersonic systems for over two decades. The propulsion system we talk about were in this case symmetrically mounted on either side of the Rohini sounding rocket for the testing purposes. And also not only the DRDO, but the ISRO also is focused now on the hypersonic air breathing vehicle with the air integration system that it is calling as HAVA project and the development of the critical technology. Because hypersonic technology is not only that can be used only for the defense purposes for the designing and development of missiles, but it can also play a very important role in the development of the vessels that can take satellite into the outer space. So that is why both the organizations ISRO and DRDO are continuously engaged here. If we try to understand the advantages from the ISRO's perspective, it says that if you are able to successfully incorporate and implement the scramjet technology in its future space launching vehicles, then it will not have to carry the oxygen as the present rockets do because oxygen is the one that acts as an oxidizer and it is due to the presence of this oxidizer, you have the ignition of the fuel and that causes the thrust. So if the scramjet technology is being used here, what will happen? The need of oxygen can be eliminated. And if you have to carry less oxygen, that means you can increase the weight of the payloads that the satellite launch vehicles are carrying. In other way, uh, after the incorporation of scramjet technology, the satellite launch vehicles can carry much more higher amount of payload or much more heavier satellites in simple terms. So in this context, it was in the 2020, the DRDO successfully had demonstrated the hypersonic air breathing scramjet technology with a flight test of the hypersonic technology demonstrator vehicle that it called as HSTDV. And this is something that also ISRO is interested in. Now, apart from this, also in the 2020, India joined the elite member club when it has launched an advanced hypersonic wind tunnel test facility in the Hyderabad. It basically is nothing but a pressure vacuum driven enclosed free jet facility that can simulate Mach 5 to Mach 12 speed. So obviously before putting the uh, engines or putting the aircrafts or any kind of vessel in the real world, you have to incorporate the designs and you have to incorporate what can say modelings in a simulated environment and this simulated environment is being provided by the wind tunnel. And this is significant as well because only two countries till now, that is the US and Russia who have this kind of facility across the world. And thus India has become the third country to have a, such a large facility and size with operating capability. So this also we can add as an effort and attempt made by India in the development of hypersonic system. Now if you look at the race to hypersonic, we have discussed that most of the uh, countries across the world who are focused upon improving, increasing their military power and also those countries which have been largely before a kind of superpower or have enjoyed superpower status such as US, Russia, they have been continuously in the race to the hypersonic and recently China also has joined it. So the question that come into mind is why countries are interested to develop hypersonic missiles. The answer is very simple because it is believed that the hypersonic missiles will have potential to beat all the existing air defense systems of the major military powers worldwide. The air defense system is something that actually picks up the signal from any incoming threat and then tries to destroy it by launching its anti-aircraft missile. So the hypersonic missiles, since they are traveling at a such a high speed, by the time the anti or we can say by the time the air defense system 
response to it, it will be too late. So, it can even damage and destroy the air defense system as well. Second, it can deliver rapid high impact strikes and also several nations including US, Russia, India and China are actively pursuing hypersonic technology as we have discussed before. And all of these countries, obviously the most advanced stage is where the USA and Russia stands. So, they have demonstrated various levels of development. So, India is still lagging behind but we have fortunately joined the race. Now, if we talk about the race further, in the 2002, if you understand, when India or the DRDO more specifically has picked up to work on this hypersonic technology, that time already US has successfully conducted the test of the scramjet engines. And following that, countries such as Russia, Japan, China and the European agencies have conducted success, successful tests of the scramjet engine. So, currently we try to understand these are the countries, after that you have the India that has joined this status. In the month of August 2021, because the major threat India currently faces is from two countries, one is from Pakistan and other is from China because of the historical reasons and the border related issues. And in those countries against the most advanced at least in the military capabilities is the China. So we have to be concerned and understand where does China stand straight. So as far as the August 2021 is concerned, China tested a nuclear capable hypersonic glide vehicle that circled the globe before speeding toward its target. And that is how you can understand how lethal hypersonic weapon can be and how the development of such weapon can increase the military capability of a country by many fold. And the test demonstrated an advanced space capability and caught US intelligence even by surprise that China has been able to successfully test it. So obviously now we do not have the we can say the luxury to stay back, stay behind, we have to be in the race and we have to develop the cap our capabilities also so that in the future if situation worsens, we will have a kind of deterrence. Now the region for the race already have talked about but apart from the major point we have discussed, overall possession of such lethal hypersonic weapons and missiles by any country will enhance its ability of the country, its armed forces to negotiate even the most advanced missile defense system and hit target with minimal warning. Plus, it also will be extremely difficult for such kind of weapons to be intercepted because of the extremely precise maneuverability and very, very high speed. And thus, it will have a decisive strategic advantage in the offensive operation. Now, we know that operations by a country in the military terms can be offensive or defensive. Offensive means when a country is launching a strike, defensive is when a country is trying to save itself from the strike. For example, a country launches missile on the other side and the uh, and the enemy country's its anti-missile system, anti-defense, uh, its defense system, missile defense system is working and trying to destroy the incoming missile. So that is example of defensive operation. So a decisive strategic advantage a country can enjoy in the offensive operations by developing such technology. And that is why the race has begun today in the world. So overall, if you try to understand, after the development of nuclear weapon capabilities by several countries across the world today, the hypersonic technology is something that we can say where most of the focus and attention of the countries and its military is going to be. So that is all about this particular video. I hope you got the gist of the concept of hypersonic technology. Where does India stand across the world and what is going to be the overall impact once the India is able to develop this technology. Thank you very much.